Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. My word, it is a beautiful morning to be out here and to be fishing. I mean, every day is a great day to be alive and to be fishing, but just this morning is especially beautiful. The mimosas are blooming. It's like in the mid 70s. There's almost no humidity. I mean, it's just one of those rare mornings in the middle of the summer that we don't get very often but it's absolutely incredible. I, I'm so happy to be out here. I mean, like I said, this is a beautiful morning. It's, it's one of those mornings you kind of take it all in and that's what I'm doing. So I'm taking it all in and I'm bringing you guys along with me, but we are here. We're about to start fishing. We just buzzed over to our first spot. Um, we've not got a tremendous amount of time though because we've got another heat advisory here in Tennessee. Um, it is currently 625. And by 12 o'clock today, it's supposed to be 98 degrees outside with a heat index of like 107 or something like that. So just extremely, extremely hot. And so we're gonna try to bust out some fishing in the morning, try to get off the water before it gets too hot. But we gotta get to fishing first before we do that. So I'm gonna shut up, we're gonna send it, we're gonna see what we can get done. Anyone. Little dude, I love the old culture, didn't you? Love the old culture. There we go. Little bitty dude, what do you want in the coal shed? Can't complain about that. Thanks, bud. Get out of here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good bite. That was fun. It's funny how it's funny how them little ones will eat that thing. Like a lot of people think a six-inch bait, you're just gonna get big bites, but I can assure you that's not always the truth. Oh my gosh. Was that a... I don't think that was a bass. I think that was a... I don't know if that was a bass. It may have been a gar. Whatever it was, I didn't, I didn't really get a hook in him.
fish. Frogfish. Where are you? Look at that. Turn that freaking swamp lord inside out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He ain't big, but he's a fish. Heck yeah. Alright guys, well, there's two little ones on the morning. So he's about the size I've been catching up here, which is kind of unusual to be totally honest with you. I and mean, this is normally kind of a spot where I can come get some bigger than average bites, but that is just not happening yet. This year, and heck, it might not. Who knows? But that's uh, one on the coal shad and one on the frog. Cannot complain about that. Wish I could get about 15 on this frog. Is uh, how you want them to eat it right there, ladies and gentlemen. Old swamp lord in the throat. All right, guys, check that out. That's awesome. That was a good bite. I mean, he wanted that thing, didn't he? Heck yeah. yeah. I don't know what all that mess is right there. He's got something going on. I don't know if that's crawdad pinchers or what, but that's disgusting. But that's a good little bite. Not a big one, but a good little bite. Absolutely soaked myself. All right, guys, I'll put that in back. Thanks, man. Phew, Lord have mercy. I, that one bit. I hit him so hard, I soaked myself. That's hilarious. He bit that thing, though. That was a good bite. That was fun. That was really fun. Really, dude? Really? Yeah, get out of here, you little shit. Damn. I mean, damn. He stinks. Look at that. I mean, golly, he messed my frog up and everything. Look at him. He got every damn leg jacked up on this thing. Jeez, he stinks. God, they stink. God, God nasty the freaking things are. <laughs> oh, man. That better be a bass right there. Is that a gar? I think that's a carp. Yep, that would have been a carp there, Jack. And it's so weird. I got those two bites over there, but I can't seem to get any more bites. There's a lot of gar in here though. I think these gar must be in here spawning. And what I've noticed is normally when there's like a ton of gar up shallow moving around like this, the bass, they can get kind of finicky. I don't know if they just don't want to compete with them or what it is, but I have noticed that. And there is a cubic crap ton of gar up here, which would make sense why maybe these bass are just a little bit more, I don't know, apprehensive to come up and eat. But I mean, I got two good bites. I don't know, it's weird. I just gotta keep fishing. Just got to keep fishing. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> a little bluegill came out after it hot. Oh, that's funny. A little bluegill, he was gonna get him some, man. I mean, he was coming out. He said, come here, you. Oh, that's funny. I honestly think sometimes that's how bass eat it too. And we just don't realize it. I think that they come out after it real hot like that and just come up right behind it. And then I think sometimes they just like 
they ease up behind it to suck it right under. That's my favorite kind of bite because normally that's when they got it really, really good is when they just do that poof thing. That's when you get a good hook into them. Come on now. Come on now. Hell. See, unlike that guy, I don't think that's a big fish. Honestly, I have my... Oh, there he is. He came back after. <laughs> oh god, I love frog fishing so much. I love frog fishing so much. Golly, a swamp lord gets him good. This is such a good frog. I have fished with a lot of frogs. Experiment with a lot of frogs. Man, that swamp worm sticks them like freaking nothing else will. Berkeley killed it with this thing. Such a good frog. Good hooks. Just the overall body design walks good. Freaking love it. <clears throat> Gets me going in the mornings, man. Tell you what. I'm going to skate one song and one song only. I think sometimes some of them rush out. That one rushed. He missed it the first time and then came back and got the second time. And I think some of them slip right up underneath and just, <laughs> those are the ones you always get hooked good but that dude he had to take a couple passes at it but he finally got it that's awesome that's a fun bite i always love that like when one misses it and then they come back to stroke it that's like my favorite thing you know guys they have fossil record of dragonflies that are as big as like this hobie i couldn't imagine that being alive today like could you imagine this like being on the lake just sitting there you know fishing along and all of a sudden here it comes freaking dragonfly as big as your kayak lands on the front of your kayak tips you you're in the water and then obviously because if we got the dragonflies you know you're gonna have the the 50 foot crocodiles too that are living in the water and the trilobites that eat your leg off i don't know I probably am the only person who thinks about things like that, but I often think about just like how terrifyingly big prehistoric animals were, especially dinosaurs. Di dinosaurs always fascinate me because of just how big a freaking dinosaur had to be. You know, I mean, like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think they were 20 foot tall, you know, like 60 foot long, probably weighed, God, I don't know how much something like that weighed. I mean, but... If it wanted to, it just knock a tree over, flip your car over. I mean, if it wanted to come through your house, it just comes through your house. There's nothing stopping it. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me. Maybe that's just a me thing. But I often think about dinosaurs and giant insects and prehistoric animals and things that used to be alive and just how we as humans could could not survive around them. I mean, we just couldn't. We. I mean, I guess we could, but. I think we would eke out an existence versus thriving like we do. Because like even right here, Tyrannosaurus Rex comes out of the woods, I don't see it coming. Nothing I can do. I'm gone. Just Tournament. I'd have lost that fish about 12 times. Heck yeah. There it goes. There we go. Not a giant, but a good little fish nonetheless. Real pretty. Real healthy. Again, throwing way up shallow. I didn't feel that fish bite, but heck yeah. Thanks, buddy. He put up a heck of a fight. I know that much. I know that much. Lord have mercy. Thought that fish was way bigger than that. Fight so hard, cool river current fish. They just tell you they lived a little bit different gear than 
other fish do, but that was fun. That was a good bite. Mimosa tree. You guys hear me talking about them all the time. Mimosa trees, they get these beautiful pink buds on them. It's one of my favorite trees in the whole entire world just because of how pretty they are. But these things always hold fish. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that those flowers attract a lot of pollinators. And then those pollinators, you know, fall into the water. Little flies, little bugs, beetles, bees, whatever it is. And then that attracts the bluegill and then ultimately attracts the bass. And that's exactly where I caught that fish was literally right there at the base of that mimosa tree. But that is a mimosa tree, ladies and gentlemen. Such a beautiful, beautiful tree. All right, guys. Make a little move real quick. I'm gonna buzz on down here to another section. I say buzz on down here. It's it's quite a ways down here, but we're gonna buzz down here, see what's up. Little, little, little bit of fish. Little bit of fish. We're eating them shad. What he's doing? Shad spawning still down here. They hit that thing because them shad are spawning. They hit it so fast. They're just lashing out. See that one? That's what he did. I threw in there and he just lashed out at it. Where's your big brother at, bro? Where's your big brother at? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for old Papa Donk. A little Donk. And we got a Mayfly hatch and a Shad Spawn going on. That's like that's like the double header right there, boys. There ought to be 10 billion fish up here. All wanting to eat wacky rigs and frogs and everything else my word i didn't even realize that huh that's crazy you'd think they'd be up here you'd think they'd want to do it but i don't know all right well Caught a couple down here, nothing of any size, but we caught a couple. Now we're gonna start buzzing our way back up the river channel, back up this direction, uh, currently 9.30. So we got plenty of time to go and catch some fish. It's gonna get hot here in just a minute though, but we probably got about a, I don't know, 10 minute, 15 minute trek back up through here. I'm gonna go fish one pocket, fish some more overhanging stuff with the wacky rig gonna stop and fish something where I saw a fish on the way down here I don't know if that fish will repositioned on there but we'll check that out but yeah it's been a good morning so far I mean you can't complain caught a few on a frog caught a few on a wacky rig caught one on a coal shad it's good stuff ladies and gentlemen it's good stuff old dock here starting to fall down that's funny. There's so much of this stuff that's just changed over the years you know it's funny there's a few fishing spots that I kind of consistently go to year after year and it's funny to watch them change as the years pass and this is one of those deals you know this used to be a a perfectly good dock and now it's fallen in you know there's trees that have moved brush piles that have moved stumps that have literally like finally just dissolved away and it used to all be areas where bass would live and now they just don't exist anymore because you know old father time does not discriminate against anything you know time is going to pass no matter what we do and things kind of just fall apart and uh i don't know it's it's just funny there, there's been some things happen and things like these docks and certain bushes and trees and one was this mimosa tree i talked about in another video right after my dad died um there was a mimosa tree that me and him would go fish every single time we went to this one spot and i mean every single time there used to be a fish under that mimosa tree and it was one of those things that it was kind of just one of those things like, hey, 
you know, let's go fish the mimosa tree is what dad would say. And so we'd, we'd run over there, we'd fish the mimosa tree and sure enough, we'd end up getting a bite. And like a week after he died, I, I ended up going fishing just to get out of the house and get my mind off everything. And uh, went to that spot and went to fish that mimosa tree and it had been cut down. And like, I don't know, it's just weird things like that. You know, I, I, I don't know what that is or, or how to describe what that is but it's just a it's a weird thing like that you know it's almost like it's an end of a season it's the passing of, of time and uh i don't know maybe maybe i'm being weird about it but it's just something that i've noticed and it seems to be super consistent on how just life goes on and life changes and, and, and there's certain things that maybe i didn't notice that they used to change like they do but they do and now i'm starting to notice them but Yep, just like this old dock. I used to catch a lot of fish off this old dock, and now it don't exist anymore. Really, dude? Come here. Get over there. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Little bitty guy. Little itty bitty guy. Went to reel that thing back and he grabbed it. That's funny. Come here, dude. You little. I mean, a dad gym giant called the dang on Gabe Warden. We got a state record. That was cool. Heck yeah. There's another one. That was cool. As soon as that hit the water, he rushed out and got it. Not a big one, but it's a fish. It's fun. A little healthy, dude. Love seeing them healthy like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is, um, it's got tough on us here. These fish have quit eating like they were eating earlier today. I think it has a lot to do with that shad spawn. That shad spawn was a lot thicker this morning and, you know, a little bit later into the morning than it was the other day. And, you know, what I've noticed is like when you've got a shad spawn or mayfly hatch or whatever it is, those fish will kind of eat on the peak of it, which is you know super early in the morning, right at dawn, and then it just tapers off throughout the day, and then you get a bunch of fish that are just sitting around with full bellies that don't really have to eat anything or don't want to eat anything, and so they don't. And I think that's what we're dealing with right now. I think that the sun's got up, and I think these fish are just chilling, you know, not really eating a whole bunch. The few bites that I have got, it's kind of been reactionary. You know, skip it in there, they hit it as soon as it hits the water and you hook them, which is what we were doing the other day, but it's just not working as well this morning. So we're gonna go uh, fish our little pass through over here, fish a couple more shade lines, see what we can get done. But I had a fun morning. We caught some fish on a frog. That always makes me happy. We didn't catch any big ones, but we had some fun. What are you doing, dude? What, what, what's your angle here, bro? What's the angle here, huh? He's trying to take my worm from me. I don't want that worm, dude. I don't want your worm. He said, give me the Sanko. Give me the Stanko. Well, today was fun to say the least. We made it back into the truck. We're heading back to the house right now. Gonna get the kayak put up, get everything put back in the beard barn. But yeah, we got off the water before it got too hot. 
Um, by the time I got in the truck, it was 91 degrees, and now it is currently 98 degrees, and it is only 11.53. It's gonna be a hot one today, to say the least, but we got on some fish. Caught some on a frog, caught some on a wacky, caught one on a cold shad. I mean, you can't complain when you catch them on a frog, and those are really kind of my first solid frog fish of the year, which I'm super excited about, and that bite should just keep heating up, which I'm also, really excited about but we got some cool stuff coming down to pop i'm actually leaving this week to go down to lake lanier do some spotted bass fishing and then the week after that we're heading down towards the coast to do a little bit of red fishing as well so be on the lookout for those videos i'm excited about it but i'm glad you guys watched this video i'm glad you guys decided to come hang out with me and as always you guys are sweet and thank you for watching